how do you explain and what is your doctrine on the origin of the Caucasian race? Well, the uh, Caucasian race uh, came about, uh, uh, as they are called, white people. And they were white people. It was made that Caucasian is the uh, name given to the quality of the man. Who was the original? Deep bone and stale face. The person have a stale color, and his bones are weak, and the color Caucasian. But uh, actually, he was made white. As uh, this was brought about, uh, we would consider just recently. Uh, to document the billions and trillions of years, uh, the Caucasian race, that of course, is just here of the day almost. Uh, that took place 6,000 years ago. I'm going to guess, and maybe he could help me to uh, convey a message to you. He's my friend, I like him a lot, and I'm going to tell you why I brought him in and why I think he's important to the future of you learning about the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. And his name is uh, Yosef bin Asiel Israel. In the name of Allah, the Beneficent, the Most Merciful, who appeared in the person of Master Farad Muhammad, to whom righteous and holy praise is forever due, we thank that great God for his coming to the wilderness of North America to raise up amongst us the first begotten from the dead, that special soul, I speak none other than the most honorable Elijah Muhammad. In those holy and righteous names, I greet you in the words of peace. Assalam alaikum. We'll be right back after these quick commercials. Looking for something that feels good, looks great, and stands the test of time? Well, we have it for you. Black Royalty is our athleisure line that is made from the finest bamboo and cotton blend. We have design, high quality, tracksuit, and t-shirts in multiple colors that provide you the most comfort when you need it most. Whether you're in the gym or running errands or just lounging around with loved ones, you need to be in the best quality clothing as possible. We have constructed a high quality clothing line that does not break the bank and we beat out all of our competitors on price. So please, if you're interested in being comfortable, not just in the gym, but when you're running around and doing errands, Please visit blackroyaltywear.com. Also, you can find us on Instagram at Black Royalty. And if you have any questions or comments about our brand and how you can help participate, you can find us at blackroyaltywear at gmail.com. We will be quick to answer your questions, and with our responses, we will be very thorough. So also, like I said, Black Royalty is for you because it was made by you with the intentions of serving you. So leave all those other clothing lines behind and get on what makes sense. Something that's going to stand the test of time because black don't crack. Looking to get the courage to get up and get out and do something this summer, whether it's just getting overall healthier state or lose a couple pounds for that beach body. Well, we got the answer for you. Summer Fitness Boot Camp held every Saturday from June 1st to August 10th from 8 a.m. to 9 a.m. on 39th and Cottage Grove at the football field. For a cost of $10, we put you through a rigorous training of functional and strength and endurance using only your body weight to get into the health that you need to sustain yourself long term. So if you're interested in getting your body more active and being a healthier version of yourself, come on out. Contact. 312-646-8449 or 312-391-5234. Ask for Corey or Prince Yosef. Now this is the opportunity of a lifetime where you get expertise training to get in the shape that you deserve, not just need. Once again, every Saturday from 8 a.m. to 9 a.m. for only a cost of $10 from the weeks of June 1st to August 10th, 2019. Come out to 39th and Cottage Grove, the football field, where you can get into a better version of yourself. Assalamu alaikum. Welcome back again to another installment 
of Know Thyself Radio Show, where we make it our duty, responsibility, and lifelong mission to give you nothing but the teachings of the most honorable Elijah Muhammad to save the problems of the black man and woman of today's time. And today is it's a special episode, as each and every episode is a special episode because I get on here and get to bear witness to the teachings of the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad and use his teachings to look with an analytical eye at the situations, the problems, and all of the circumstances that are upon our people and use these teachings critically to solve meticulously everything that befalls us as a people. And I know with all my heart, soul, and might, if we just take the time to listen, humble ourselves, and turn away from our evil slave masters, take these teachings, start to apply them in our lives, we will see the direct benefit. I'll be remiss in my duties and my responsibilities if I don't first just want to thank my brother and friend and companion, Brother Sharif Muhammad, who gave a beautiful, beautiful interview last week, who I am grateful for for taking the time out to enjoy this beautiful life's work that we have took in as our job and our mission, which is to use the teachings of the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad to solve the problems of the black man and woman of today. But I thank him for articulating his message and taking the time to give us his perspective in the teachings. But today, I was going to do an interview, but I said, no, I think I need to address some things. I need to take this time today, take this particular circumstance and situation to look at some of the things that are happening in America today and throughout the world and use the teachings, use the writings of the messenger to give us a clear perspective on how not to just perceive these things, but how to prevent and protect ourselves in these situations. Our people have become so lackadaisical in our desire to obtain freedom that we are willingly giving ourselves to our open and outright enemy. And I know you say, oh, brother Yusuf, here you go again. You come on here each and every week just to tell us how stupid we are. No, brother and sister, I don't tell you how stupid you are, but I for sure tell you how deaf, dumb, and blind you are. Now, if you equate that to being stupid, that's your own prerogative, but I know you intelligent. I know if you just take the time to clean your mind from all of the dirt and filth that this enemy has put inside of you, and you take on some of these clean and self growing teachings of the most honorable Elijah Muhammad which was given to him by almighty God Allah who appeared in the person of master Farad Muhammad to whom righteous and holy praise is forever due you will benefit from it but you're reluctant to do so and it really baffles me as a as a man who sees the same thing I think you see or you at least verbalize that you see every time you have a conversation or anything something or anything that happens that is very just blatant as it relates to the murder and mayhem that is happening to our people happening across the planet to all peoples but especially our people because we don't have any protection unlike other people yeah, other people get killed, other people get murdered, other criminal things happen. But you're the only people on the planet that nobody cares about. You're the only people on the planet that nobody will give a lending hand to. And if somebody does do something for you, it is momentarily only for their benefit and for their own self-righteous reasons. Oh, brother and sister... I have to be honest with you, and some people don't like me talking like this. He said, you're divisive. You're a race baiter. You're someone who wants to bring disunity amongst the people. Oh, no, brother and sister. I'm someone who wants to bring light and knowledge to our people so that we don't continue to be in a situation that we're deaf, dumb, and blind, and we stay asleep so that these things continue to happen to us without any recourse or redress 
that prevents these terrible atrocities from continuing. So I want to talk about, again, the disdain and hate that the white man has for you. And why do I keep bringing this up? Because you don't understand the reality of his hate for you. See, if you don't understand white supremacy, if you don't understand the system of white supremacy and how it works, how intricate it is, how multi-leveled and multifaceted it is, you don't understand anything else. I know some of you saying, well, that sounds like Neely Fuller Jr. Oh, that's the most honorable Elijah Muhammad. Neely Fuller Jr. was influenced by the most honorable Elijah Muhammad. Good brother. No disrespect, but truth is truth. Now, but he is correct in his assessment. If you do not understand white supremacy, how it works, and what it is, you don't understand nothing at all. And I'm telling my people, if you don't understand how this white man has been ruling over you for the last 6,000 years, but here in America, especially the past 400 plus years, you don't understand nothing. You cannot work your way out of hate and disdain from this enemy. You cannot love your way. You cannot beg your way. You cannot sleep your way out of this. See, brother and sister, there is nothing you can do that can change what they truly feel and how they will continuously treat you. Brother and sister, that's the reality of things. Because white supremacy, white supremacy is so, I, I would say, strategic in this form and fashion that it's at least self-aware enough to play both sides of the field so yes they're going to play the protagonist and the antagonist they're going to play the benevolent one and then they're going to play just a blatant outright enemy who is so facetious and ferocious in his attack on you so then you would run to the other white man to try to have him be your savior but that's part of the game it's a lure to put you to sleep and then you come into the so-called benevolent one Democratic Party because they're not as straightforward with their tongue and they do you even worse see you got the open and outright racist white supremacists and then you got the covert see that's why they came up with agencies like the CIA whether you're in Israel the Mossad whether you're in London or the British Empire the MI6 whether you're in Russia, the KGB, they have certain covert, secretive organizations that know how to be double agents, that know how to be sleeper cells, that know how to be spies, that know how to be other than themselves, true falsehood. They know how to be actors. That's why Hollywood's so big. America, white supremacy is nothing but a group of actors who put on a show each and every day to get you to try to fall victim of their lies and deception. Oh, brother and sister, this is why it's so important that you understand the time that we are in. See, white supremacy has has black people under a state of hypnosis, thinking that we're overachieving and that we're progressing, thinking that our talents are doing something greater than the total sum and that other Negroes are just lazy, are just downtrodden or don't have enough education, enough get up and go about themselves and that's why they don't make it. And if they just work hard, if they just pull themselves up by the bootstraps that they'll make it and be successful, no, brother and sister, that's mental weakness that you have if you think like that. You're only in that position. Maybe you do work hard. Maybe you are intelligent. I'm not taking that from you one bit. But to think that you overcoming the situations of other black people, other black brothers and sisters, just because of your talent alone is false. You're only in that position because you play into the greater scheme that they're trying to produce, that they are producing because they're, try, they're past the trying stage. It's working. So you have to be 
well aware that if you don't have an independent nation of your own that you control, that you govern, that you protect, that you provide for the women and children, you don't have nothing. So no, you're not in a situation that you've overcome your circumstances. You have been in a situation where that you actually lowered down the totem pole because you really don't have no control of your or your own reality. That's why as soon as these black entertainers do one thing that is contrary of the best interest of whoever is controlling them, who's ever paying them, who's ever telling them what to do, they get rid of them. They make spectacle of them. They punish them. I mean, it's just too many examples to even go through it. I, I can say this name, I can say that name, but you know, hell, look in the mirror and look at yourself in a lot of cases. So you gotta understand the reality of what I'm saying. You gotta understand the reality of the time that we in. But you must understand that you're falling in the psychological and sociological trap thinking that you are better than the total sum because you got a couple dollars. No, that's part of white supremacy's game. They let certain people reach a certain level just for the simple fact to think that you have some type of room for growth and development that is not as hard. That's the difference between mental and spiritual shackles versus physical shackles. That's the difference. See, they give you some room where your mind starts to play tricks on itself and you start to think, hey, I'm other than what I am. I'm in a different situation. You create scenarios and situations in your mind to fool yourself so that you can cope with the reality of things. Each and every day you go out your doors, you see our people in despair. You see them in a situation that's full of decadence. You see them in the worst possible conditions possible. But yet and still, because you've created this facade in your mind, you tell yourself, Oh, well, it's not as bad. We got Oprah. We got Jay-Z. We got this. I'm wearing Jordans. I'm dating a white woman. I can drive a BMW or Mercedes. So you tell yourself these things to pacify yourself, to make you think that you have some semblance of freedom. But how could you really have freedom and you're not free to do anything? Like live. Like not to be worried about if tomorrow is your last day, if today is your last day. You don't know what you're eating because they're poisoning the food. You don't know what you're drinking because they're poisoning the water. You don't know what your children are watching because everything they give, our children have subtle and subliminal messages which are controlling their minds and taking them further away from God, further away from their selves, further away from truth and putting them in an environment where everything is out of whack. From birth, they're working on our children. And that's why they come up and they can say, I want to be other than what I am. Men are growing up to be women and women are growing up to be men. And you're telling me that that's the natural way? You got to hear me, brother and sister. You got to hear what I'm saying. I'm, at this point, I'm pleading with you to look at your circumstances and to be honest with yourself. Take off those blinders that they have on the horses, which they have on you, because that's all you are to them. It's a racehorse. And you know what they do as soon as that horse can't win any more races or gets, gets hurt or injured or just not of use anymore. They put him down. They put him down. So I want us to be real clear. But before I go any further, I've already went far enough in that. I, I have to read from the messenger of God. Because he's going to put everything in context of where we're going for the rest of this conversation. Now, listen to this. This is from The Fall of America, Chapter 5, page 28, titled Under the Shadow of Death. We, the black lost found of our people here in America, live under the shadow of death by the way of cowardly enemies. Every one of us, the cowardly enemies seek our deaths one way or another 
the cowardly enemies will not fight you as a brave man will fight you if they think that you would fight back. They will steal on you when you least expect it, attack from them. We live under the shadow of death. We flee from the cowardly enemy, devils of the south, seeking refuge in the same cowardly enemy brothers in the north. Now, as I said earlier, the white man's nature is to do things that have a detrimental effect on the world and the original people of this planet. That is his nature. He cannot change from that reality. Though he may do something that may seem as if he's progressing or he has other than what he has been identified since his existence to be doing, when he gets back into a comfort zone or when he gets out of whatever his personal agenda may be, his arterial motive may be, it goes back to murder and mayhem. Now, as I said earlier in the messenger, because I got it from the messenger, but he just said it perfectly. See, we were running from the South white thinking that what we were facing in the antebellum South and chattel slavery was just so horrid, so bad that we can go up to the North and things will be different. And then we got up to the North and realized it's the same thing. The Civil War was not fought over whether slavery should be ended. The war was fought on how the slave would be controlled and how slavery looked going into the next century. Now, the South was built on an agrarian lifestyle. It was built on agriculture. So a lot of the money that was produced, the economy was solely depended on the slave producing some of these cash crops, whether it be cotton, whether it be tobacco, whether it be sugarcane. I can go down the list. But as America in the North was changing into more an industrial state with factories and these type of things, they needed black labor. So they said, hey, you're doing it wrong down there. Yeah, you don't pay them nothing, but you still got to clothe them. You still got to feed them. You still got to shelter them, at least the bare minimum to keep them alive so they can do the work. We found out another way. How about... We pay them, but we don't clothe them, we don't shelter them, and we don't feed them. But we pay them such a little amount that they only going to be able to do one if that. So we give them the bare, bare, bare minimum to either feed themselves, because if they feed themselves, they're not going to be able to clothe or shelter themselves. If they shelter themselves, they're not going to be able to clean, feed and clothe themselves. And you get the point. So that was the agenda that the white man was seeking to do with his slave. You got to hear what I'm saying right now. And because the reality of the white man is as such that he's going to fight no matter what, because they couldn't come to agreement, they went into war. And even after the war, after the so-called North won and the South was destroyed, they didn't go back to fighting them and killing them. They went back to being brothers. They went down to the South and rebuilt the South. And what did they do for you? Yeah, they gave you the 13th, 14th, and 15th Amendment. But what did the 13th Amendment say? Say, yeah, you would be free unless convicted of a crime. Unless you become a felon. And what did they do? They made laws that would ensure black people would be felons. Just coming out of slavery, they created the vacancy laws where you could be arrested for what? Not being able to read, not having a home, not having a job. These are things that you were able to get arrested for. So it was putting you right back into slavery, putting you right back on the chain line and the chain game. See, you can't win for losing. What am I saying? I'm saying what the messenger of God is saying, that they're cowards. Their nature is that of cowards. Every chance they get, they're trying to kill you one way or another. You keep looking at death as being physically put in the ground. But death comes in many ways, brother and sister. Now, let me continue. They seek police jobs so they can beat and kill us who are trying to escape. Why is that so important? The first police jobs in this country were slave catchers. 
yes, that is true. But it's the same thing today. If I just said the 13th Amendment says that you will be a slave if you're convicted on a crime, what do police officers do? They go so-called get criminals, and a lot of cases make criminals because being black is a crime. So as long as they find you in a position where they can invoke their power on you, because you're giving it up and you're relinquishing yourself by not having knowledge of self, knowledge of God, and knowledge of the devil. They put you in a position where they're going to create to be create an environment for you to be a slave again. Hear what I'm saying. They seek to kill us or get us killed at any price. They do not care about our loyalty to them. In their hearts, there is death for us the black man in America and I know a lot of you said hey well I'm gonna be Republican I'm gonna vote Trump I'm gonna be, wear MAGA hats that doesn't mean anything they don't care about that you're lower than the dog in their eyes you're lower than the dog in their eyes they have more reverence and love for pets than they do you you got see white people are so damn hit a, hypocritical it really makes me sick these people get online, get on infomercials, get on TV, and talk about how we got to save the animals, how we got to save the planet. We got to clean up the ocean. But you refuse to clean up these police departments. You refuse to clean up these so-called educational systems and banking systems and these hospitals and medical systems which are deliberately killing black men and women each and every day. But you want to tell us about cleaning up the ocean and you can't even clean up your own damn house to prevent the black man, which is the most viable life on this planet, from being killed? What am I saying? I'm saying that's by design. That's not by happenstance. That's deliberate, whether they say it openly or not. In a lot of cases, they do. And even when they don't, they still say it. You just got to be able to read between the lines. Today, we hold out promises to you only to deceive you. That's what the white man does. They know that Allah God is offering to seat us in heaven at once. And since hell is this appointed place, they are trying to get us to go to hell with them on false promises. I told you, believe it or let it alone. We live under the shadow of death. Now, that is important now. Why is that important? Because if you don't understand the circumstances which we currently are operating in, you will never enact a plan and a strategy to eradicate that. That means you're going to perpetually be in this situation. That means children, generation of children after generation of children are going to get progressively worse. To it gets to a point where it's going to be non-existent. It won't be no remembrance of truth in the hearts of our children. There will be no remembrance of a living God in the hearts of our children. There will be no strength, independence, or even a desire to separate from our open and outright enemy from the hearts of our children if we continue on this path. What are you waiting for? God is kind, brother and sister. He has revealed himself. He has left his glory and taught that special one and raised him up to put in him the information that is necessary to free the black man and woman. And that man did his job. And I'm speaking of the most honorable Elijah Muhammad. He went all across this country, raising up brothers and sisters, giving them the truth, teaching his ministers, teaching his followers spread this message globally and he was the perfect example did not deviate one iota from what his teacher had taught him how do we repay a man like that it's only one way to do so in my eyes it's to follow suit listen to what he has taught and implement in our lives and not let anybody else try to shame us into doing otherwise because you can't shame the white man from being a white man. That's not how that works. When he decides he's going to kill you, he's going to kill you. You ain't going to talk him out of that. You ain't going to beg. You, you, you see when you're looking on the news, when you see these videos, our brothers being killed, our sisters being killed, when they 
choking our babies. I mean, babies. With the mothers, he's just a child. He's just a baby. Let him go. Let him go. Leave him alone. He ain't did nothing. It was just a situation recently. 12-year-old son, child being choked out by a white man, officer, so-called. He didn't stop. He didn't let him go. He didn't, because all he knows is what he gives. It's violence. You begging and crying only fuels his fire. It makes him want to choke harder. Because now you're giving him what he needs. And that's to feel powerful. That's to feel empowered. That's to feel like he has some control. Because that's all he wants is to have control over you. That's it, brother and sister. He's a predator. And we know predators are cowards. They wait and they prowl. Not going against somebody at that same ilk. They try to seek out those who have a disadvantage. Ones who can't bite them back or run as fast or do the things that they can do. And even when they, when you see cheetahs and stuff go for gazelles, they usually go for what? The small, slow, weak ones at the back of the line. I'm going to read from you another book because the messenger said we're in the sh- shadow of death. And this is from a guy named Carl Quigley. It's called Tragedy and Hope. A history of the world in our time. And the reason I'm reading this because I want you to understand the mindset of this white man. Now, Carl Quigley, do your research, was an advisor, a teacher to a lot of these presidents, including Bill Clinton, which black people foolishly proclaimed as the first black president because he was able to play the saxophone. And we are caught up in sport and play, and that was enough to allure us, like the Pied Piper, into coming with him. And, and it really, it's really a sad case of how foolish our people can be and how easily we can be deceived. But I understand when you don't have knowledge of what is really going on and who is who, then it's easy to be deceived and fall to the deceptive and really blatant in my eyes, but for the sake of this conversation, the deceptive means of tricknology to coerce our people into doing things that is contrary to our best self-interest. And so, this is on page 15. Tragedy and Hope. Western civilization in its world setting. Now listen to this. Now he talks about the things that Western, Western civilization have been able to create. Some of the most important technology that Western civilization has. Now he gives a whole bunch of stuff to talk about the technology, but I'm gonna get to the so-called meat of everything, the meat and bones. So he goes to list. The most important parts of Western technology can be listed under four headings. Now Western civilization just means white civilization. When they say Western civilization, they mean white civilization, which we all know means white supremacy government. Now, number one, the ability to kill, development of weapons. That's number one. The greatest thing that the white man has created is the ability to kill, the development of weapons, his ability to weaponize every aspect of life to keep you in a state of death. See, that's his nature. See, you keep thinking that I'm up here name calling. You thought the messenger was name calling. You thought his ministers were just saying things because we wanted to vent and we wanted to have some type of rebuttal when they were calling us nigger. No. The devil was an attribute that accurately fits the description of the characteristics were, that were displayed through his tenure on this planet. His 6,000 year reign He only did one thing and one thing only. Kill, destroy, and maim. He has been a destructive force everywhere he has went on this planet. And by his own omission, because Carl Quigley is a white man. If I didn't make that clear from the outset, he is a white man. 
And he said himself, the first thing was the ability to kill, development of weapons. Now he goes on to list three other things, but he's already given you the first one, which is the only one, and everything else subsequently coincides with that. Now he says this, and now he tries to use that trichnology now. But in every lie, it's a bit of truth. Now he says, the ability to preserve life. Preserves who life? Who life are you preserving? The life that they choose. Now they put themselves in a position to play God. I'm going to choose this person to live. I'm going to choose that person to live. So forth and so on. But he also goes in the ability to preserve life. The development of sanitation and medical services. Now we know that there's places on this planet, hell, there's places in this country that lack adequate medical services. That means that millions of our people are being killed. But you said you have the ability to preserve life. But why is it a situation where everybody's not given that equal opportunity? Everybody's not given that chance. Everybody's not, everybody's not given a situation where they can have the ability to have their life preserved. Sanitation. So many situations where places that we live, that we reside, that we go to school, that we work, that we seek medical attention are inadequate in the sanitation department. Just totally unsterilized and unsanitary. But you have the right to preserve life, correct? You have the, you've created the ability of sanitation and medical devices, medical advancements, medical services. But yet and still, as millions of people don't have the ability to have services or such services that actually preserve their life. So you using those to kill again. Number three, the ability to produce both food and industrial goods. I'm going to go food, the big one. Is a number of our people obese? A number of our people are dying from diet-related diseases and health ailments? Huh. So what type of food are you giving? Or are you giving us the food with the original intent to kill to destroy, to create weapons. See, the white man's gonna tell you if you can only look. He said if you wanna know something or keep something from a black man, you put it in the book. Now, number four, improvements in transportation and communications. Now, we know the news, and this is gonna go into where I'm leading to, is a communication apparatus. Media, communication institution. But what type of communication are they giving to people? What are they communicating to the people? Lies and deception. What does lies and deception do? It kills the spirit, the intellect, the mental, and the social capacity of a person to a state where they're left, deaf, dumb, and blind. If you're communicating lies to a person, you're giving them something that is not good for their well-being. Only truth has the ability to heal and nourish the body because it says the scripture says man cannot live off bread alone. But truth that proceeded out the word of the mouth of thee. What am I saying? That has been weaponized. To such a point that we fall victim to believing everything that we see on screen. And now they've created these social media institutions that yeah they may have some benefit we all use them here and there but the main purpose for billions of people are to keep them in a state of confusion and disarray totally beguiled befuddled bewildered is the state of our youth in particular because we go in there and communicate the most simplest and unproductive things that one people could actually have conversations about. Our women are going there exploiting themselves. Our men are going there exploiting themselves. Having rival beefs. Showing how much money they got. Showing how many women they can sleep with. This is what we're communicating on these social media platforms and I'm not saying that that's the whole but I'm saying it's much too many examples that it is overwhelmingly drowning out the so-called good that is being done on these platforms and even those who are 
disseminating truth. They do it in a lot of times for their own self-aggrandizement, not because they're avid workers that are actually trying to produce an environment that is conducive to freedom, justice, and equality, but because they want to be seeing themselves and they use that as a niche. They use that as an avenue. They use that as a platform to give them some type of notoriety so that they can be recognized because they couldn't make it as a rapper, an entertainer, or a basketball player. This is what our people have fallen to. Now, I'm not going to be too much longer. I'm already been going for so long but I want to read the situation about the media again using their lies and deception to paint a narrative that keeps us deaf dumb and blind now remember as the messenger said we're in the shadow of death now for most of you know this past week it was a white supremacist who young man because we see and this is being more and more prevalent These young white men who are subscribing to these ideologies, to these ideologies of white dominance and the use of direct force through murder of getting people in line, whether they be white or black. And a lot of people were saying that, well, he killed white people. Yes, white people kill white people. White people kill everybody. White people are the number one killers on this planet. Yes, they paint you as ravenous, they paint you as uncivilized, but like I said, their nature is that of murder and mayhem. He said, Carl Quigley himself said, our greatest technology is the ability to kill. Now, this is the California newspaper. Listen to this. FBI is quoted saying, the media's wrong on the garlic festival shooter, white supremacy, ideology, despite IG posts. Now, Why is this important? Because the FBI was created to be an institution domestically who does not fight terrorism in the sense of going after white people who do things or other uh, infiltrators that come in America who may cause harm to the state of the people. No, FBI was created to fight brothers like Marcus Garvey and these black movements that were coming out of the 18th century and they seen the rise of these uprisings and revolts that our people were doing great movements like the messenger of God's movement, the nation of Islam that was started by our messenger that was started by Master Fred Muhammad, who was God in person, to try to infiltrate and turn coat our people so that we won't never have something that is stable, that can sustain into perpetuity, an environment that it is constructive for our people. That's what the FBI was created for. Because you got to realize is that the greatest terrorist force, the greatest enemy to the white race is a free black man. You are the terrorist of the white people here and internationally, globally. So that's why this is important. FBI officials called media reports characterizing the Gilroy Festival gunsman ideology wrong after outlets reference a social media post and literature association with white supremacists. Speaking to reporters Wednesday outside the festival grounds where three were killed and 12 were injured Sunday, John Bennett, FBI special agent in charge Yeah, look at that title. Said investigators still do not know what the ideology was of the 19-year-old shooter, Williams Legan. Santino William Legan. We're looking at multiple threads of conversation that he had, Bennett told reporters, according to the footage from KTVU. However, we're still not comfortable in saying It is an ideology one way or another. The FBI agent added officials are awaiting the arrival of the Bureau's Behavioral Analysis Unit to come out and better profile and help look at the potential mindset and ideology. Now, white people know how to control the narrative. They know how to write a script that benefits them 
in whatever way they want. Now, this wouldn't even be a conversation if it was a black man still in a bag of chips. It wouldn't be, well, we don't know if he didn't, he already bought the chips. We didn't know if he was trying to feed his baby daughter. We didn't know whatever, whatever. The situation that happened, whether it be Mike Brown, whether it be Eric Garner, they, I mean, we can go down the list. Trayvon Martin, at once they were criminalized. At once it was already determined that they were doing something that deserved and warrant their death. Sandra Bland, hell, even Tamir Rice, they tried to criminalize. When the black boy in Cleveland fell into the zoo with the the monkey, Harambe, and they had to kill the monkey, they brought his father's record in. He wasn't even there, said his father had a police record, had been arrested before. What the heck does it have to do with the young boy falling into the zoo pit? But that's what they do to black people. They're going to criminalize you no matter what because it's the perception that they have to keep up that your life is not worth nothing. That you deserve every bad thing that comes your way. It should be never a situation that somebody has a bleeding heart for you. Back to the... In a press conference Tuesday afternoon, FBI special agent in charge Craig Ferris said investigators had no reason to believe Legan was targeting any particular characteristic Sunday. They still were reviewing his social media and digital media forensics, along with other pieces of information. Now, this is the key point. In an Instagram post just before the shooting, a now-deleted account because they will delete the account to try to erase all of his media or social media imprints that he had left because that's how white people stay on code and protect each other. We don't do that, but that's what they do. He, this is talking about legal now, urged people to read Might is Right, a late 19th century book that the Southern Poverty Law Center said is widely popular among nationalists, Rolling Stone reported, along white nationalists. Let me be clear. Now, the Southern Poverty Law Center, that's a whole nother topic that we'll get to another day. They don't have no right to even talk about anybody doing anything duplicitous. But that's what they do. They play both sides. So we understand why they did that. Now, the might is right. This is a real, real interesting thing that they said. That this brother was urging people. That this white killer was urging people to read. Let me not use the word brother. Falsely identify him as somebody that I have reverence for. Now, I'm going to read to why this is important. But let me finish going. The Post reportedly went on saying, Why overcrowded towns and paved more open space to make room for hordes, hordes, hordes of mestizos and Silicon Valley white and it user explorative. Why is that so important? Mestizos is really Spanish, Mexican, but they're still white because if they're just the whiter Mexicans, they have an affinity to their Spanish conquerors. So, and Silicon Wadi bleeding heart liberals. Now, like I said, when I was talking about the Civil War, white people get mad when other white people are off cold. White people get mad when other white people are not taking their white supremacy role serious and they're partying and they're having sex with black people and they're hanging out with black people as everything is hunky dory. Hunky dory. They want you to be in a state where it's open and outright aggression to the black man. Because that's what we're leading to now. Because you have to realize that his 6,000 year rule is up. He's in a point right now where he knows he's in natural decline. That means he's not able to give birth at a rate that allows his generations to continue. His death rate is higher than his birth rate. 
So what does it do when anybody is on his way out? Just like the scorpion. They sting you because they know they're going to die. The bees sting you, then die. But it's a suicide mission. It's a kamikaze. So on their way out, they want you to be in a situation where they can take as many as with you as possible. And this is the lower level white man. Now, I want you to read. Now, this the FBI said that we don't know his ideology was one of a white supremacist. Now, let's go to what Might is Right says. I pulled it up. Now, this is, like I said, this was written in the 1800s. Now, listen to this. I'm going to go to one of the excerpts. Listen to this. Opportunities. This is the beginning of the book. A man's opportunities, white man, are never exhausted so long as other men, black men, who are not his friends, possess millions of acres and thousands of tons of gold. The guarded treasure halls and ironclad temples of modern kings and presidents, high priests and millionaires are positively the richest the world has ever known. Listen to what he's saying. They hold vast hordes of silver and diamonds and gold. Here then is the opportunity on a colossal scale. Here is the gold of the Tsars and Nebuchadnezzars and Napoleons in the days that are coming. All is ready and prepared for them, even as in olden times. Caesar carried off the treasures of Egypt, Greece, Gaul, and Rome. Napoleon looted the money vaults of Venice, Vienne, Madrid, Berlin, and Moscow. London only escaped him. And he goes on and going. But what he's talking about. Listen, a white man should never be destitute, never be broke, long as a black man has something on his planet. That was the whole thing of the Berlin Conference. What are we doing fighting over these scraps, being in war with each other when it's this big old continent that has everything we need, every resource that we could use to continue to control this planet, to survive, to live abundantly. Let's go in there and rape them. That's why he said, the first thing we got to do is take their stuff. We can't be poor. We can go and take their stuff. They're not our friends. They're not of us. Because all you saying, we all people, we are the same. Well, he said, we not the same. It's a difference. This is the mentality. I'm going to keep on reading. I'm gonna read some other stuff. All else is error. Listen to this. The natural world is a world of war. The natural man is a warrior. The natural law is tooth and claw. All else is er is error. A condition of combat everywhere exists. We are born into a perpetual conflict. It is our inheritance. Even as it was the heritage of previous generations the condition of combat may be disguised with holy phrases of saint francis or the soft deceitful doctrines and it goes on okay listen now listen listen listen, listen. i had to stop there because i can keep going on but he's hitting so many key points that i just gotta break down when he talks about the natural world is a world of war. He's talking about the natural world and the natural state or the nature of the white man. I go back to the book I read earlier and everything's starting to make sense. Carl Quigley, the ability to kill and the development of weapons. He goes on to say that all else is error. If you're not killing, if you're not destroying, if you're not taking advantage of these slaves, of these black people, nothing else makes sense. This is what their mandate is. This is what he was reading. This is what he was involving himself in. This is what he was telling other white people to read, to listen to. This is what it's all about. Murder and mayhem. You have to understand what you're up against. You have to understand, as the messenger of God said, that you're in the shadow of death. You can't continue to think that 
all is right, all is well. When so much murder and mayhem is all around you. Brothers and sisters, we're going to have to wake up. We're going to have to grow out of this situation that we keep being naive. That we keep being foolish. That keep, we keep falling for the same okie doke so to speak. You got to get to a state where you can be able to critically analyze your circumstance and your situation so that you can be aware enough to take hold in the teachings of the messenger, implement them in your life, and solve the problems of today. But if you keep lying to yourself and you keep thinking that there is some type of course of redress in this society, you're going to keep being in the same situation, and that's in the grave. I'm going to stop here. There's so much I want to read, but I, I've went long enough. But I've given you enough that you can take and really look at, really absorb, do your own research, do your own due diligence. But even when you're studying, always have one of the messenger's writings to reference to, to give context, to give clarity, so that you can be able to understand with the whole picture what is taking place what is going on right before our very eyes in this day and time there is not a time that we have lived in harmony with these people and there will never be a time that it will be either you have to do for self you have to love self you have to appreciate self and the only way you're going to do that is if you separate from your open and outright enemy Brother and sister, we have to do better. We have to do better. So, I thank you again for taking the time to listen, to learn, to be a part of Know Thyself Radio. And we'll be back. It's our show. We can come back tomorrow if we want to. But we'll be back next week. And we're going to continue to knock you upside your head with this truth. To give you what is good for you what is necessary and what is essential for our people to be a free people I thank you for listening I thank you for taking the time out to go through this subject matter with me but I would thank you more if you take these words if you're not already a believer and a follower and use the messenger's teachings Lift this messenger up and do the work of building a nation of all. I thank you again for listening as I leave you as I came in the words of peace in paradise. Assalamu alaikum.